not much more, because, because you guys are already on the eighth floor, and the elevator only seems to be speeding up. On the 12th floor, I said organic groups and explained about it all the way to the 19th floor. Then he looked at me, but really looked at me, not at yet another random guy telling him yet another elevator pitch. How did you get into that, he asked. I stared back. For two whole floors, we kept quiet. Considering we were already on the 21st floor, that was a lot. Then, without saying anything, I leaned toward the elevator buttons and pressed the stop button. <laughs> we were hanging between two floors. Half a floor more, it was the 24th floor, our last stop. You know, I said, as if I was the rich man and he was the frightened entrepreneur. Some stories are best told when hanging on the 23rd and a half floor. Here's the prologue. I used to be a fashion designer, but nowadays I'm mostly a Drupal developer, although there are still some times I consider myself a bit of a fashion designer. For years, my interest was mass customization, you know, like a jacket. A tailor can make it custom-made, but it will be expensive. A factory can make it cheaper, but it won't fit exactly. Mass customization is about the technologies that allow you to have custom-made done with mass production tools. Now, I could go on and on about mass customization, but I know how it ends. People start rolling their eyes, and they ask me, why don't I just design clothes? Why do I insist on dealing with all those technical aspects? This whole technology stuff, it's so, it's so without a soul, they say. For that, I would like to finish the prologue and tell you three stories. Actually, the first story will be repeated twice. Here's the first story. I'm a fashion designer and a Drupal developer, although I haven't always been. A few years ago, I've developed a new technology for mass customization called MTM, made to measure. It allows you to enter your body measurement and get a pattern, a pattern of a garment that fits you exactly. This new technology of mine works great. I'm so proud of that. In the next short movie, you will see a pattern of basic pants being transformed four times. The first time, the change is minor. The second is intended for a slim fit. The third is for someone very big. And the last one, the last one doesn't change at all and remains the same. Here's the second story. This part will be repeated only once. I guess I could have repeated it a thousand times, but I hope I will never have to. That's Yuri. Yuri came from Russia when he was 14. His parents joined when he was 17, but he didn't mind that because he really hated them. He is also very poor one of the poorest I know. A few years back, he met a girl and they decided to get, to get married. The wedding was held in a tiny home. There were almost no guests, there was barely any food on the table. Yuri's wedding. Never in my life have I been in such a happy wedding. That's Arik. Arik didn't stay with us until the end. He couldn't hold it and it broke down really quickly after one year and a half. He said he preferred hanging out with his friends and go to parties. I haven't seen him since, but I heard some rumors. That he got a bit crazy, that he started taking drugs and that he became really thin and unhappy. I don't know if I believe those rumors, but somehow, years later, I still find myself to be the only one spreading them around. In this picture, Tzachi appears. We used to call him Tzacho Boy, and that's a bit strange because he's a real giant, a genuine, tender giant. Tsacho still didn't find his own place in the world. He's been traveling all over, he worked in every possible job, and started studying in every university that agreed to accept him. But still, he doesn't know what he wants. I truly hope that one day he'll find the thing he's looking for. There aren't many giants like him, and he deserves better. That's Ishi. Ishi is no doubt one of the funniest guys I've ever met. He's able to find something funny in just about any situation. 
it's extremely difficult because some situations can be really bad. Like that one time he and a couple of friends went to swim in the Yangtze River in China. In that afternoon, the two friends climbed back to the village to make a phone call. From what I've heard, his body drifted 80 kilometers from where he drowned. Recognize that? That's the first story, but now in the second version. I'm a fashion designer and a Drupal developer, although I haven't always been. I'd like to prepare pants to some of my old friends. This I'll do for Yuri. And this for Arik. I hope it will cheer him up. This one will belong to the tender giant I know. And the last one, the one that remains the same and never changes, that one I'll prepare for Ishi. I know it doesn't make much sense, but hey, what do I know? I can always say I'm just a fashion designer. So when I prepared this presentation, I realized that mass customization, a term I've been using for years, applies also to Drupal. Drupal can be considered custom-made. It can be considered mass production. But I believe that in its core, it's mass customization. Organic groups is mass customization per se. Each group has some freedoms and autonomy, but they are still bound to the rules of the main site. In Gizra, my company, will be, we've been developing a new distribution called Open Gizra. It's a PLM, a product lifecycle, product lifecycle management, and it's intended for the textile industry. It allows companies and groups to collaborate together in preparation of garments. Today, I would like to give a sneak preview to this, this distribution and show how organic groups is playing a part of it. Now, you should understand that the code is not, re not ready yet, really, really not ready. In fact, I ask our designer to make an under construction page just so it will be clear. I, of course, emphasize it should reflect the top edge technology we've been using, and yeah, that's the, that's the outcome. If you'll tilt your head a bit, you will see that the current release code name is Middle East, basically because the code is as stable as the Middle East itself. <laughs> now, we actually prepared another under construction page for the people who are actually navigating from the Middle East. Again, very chic, very classic. Now, before I dive into the distribution and show you how organic groups is playing, playing a part in it, I'd like to share a small anecdote. Since I've been talking about fashion design and about Drupal, I actually had a plan to do a fashion show. I, have, I had everything planned out. I will show a slide saying the first Drupal fashion show in neon light, loud music would start, I would call the models out, and they would present clothes that, was, that I designed as, with Drupal as inspiration. However, one thing I didn't plan, and somebody did it before me. Yeah, so just wanted to get it out of my system because uh, I was a little depressed. But although it's a bit like I tell myself that uh, Amitai, being original, is overestimated. Everybody, a big round of applause for Sam Boyer. Sam is wearing the country. Sam is wearing the country shirt. This, this sweatshirt was inspired by our models, the way they are interacting with each other. are called, I call them the IE710. The reason is you might think because maybe it, it looks classic, a bit boring, maybe only old people will use it. The real reason is that like IE7, if you look at the pocket, there are just no rounded corners.
Susan Kennedy, everybody. Patches are the atomic substance that builds our Drupal and changes Drupal, because everything changes, the world changes, Drupal changes, nothing remains the same. Alison Simmons, everybody. They say an entity is everything and nothing in the same time. At the first look, it might seem empty, but when you fill out the first layer, you add some fields, you see its beauty. Alison Simmons and the fieldable dress. Last is Johann Falk. Not everything in design should map directly to Drupal. Sometimes, sometimes it's enough to take a similar color, some nuance, some inspiration. For me, this outfit doesn't scream Drupal, but yet it's the most Drupal of them all. Of course, it doesn't hurt to add a embroidered kitten in the back. A big round for, of applause to our attractive model. about the three main concepts. <laughs> the three main concepts behind organic groups. I don't know if you're for, some of you might be familiar with organic group six. There was kind of the notion of uh, uh, roles and permissions. But in Drupal 7, I would say that this is the most important thing. Associating content, you can do it with node reference, entity re reference, whatever. But the, really, uh, the real key element of organic groups is having roles and permission per group. The second thing is leveraging entity and fields. Again, if you're coming from Drupal 6, you know CCK fields is the same thing, but in Drupal core itself. An entity is something new in Drupal 7. Uh, you are able, entity, you can describe a node, entity, you can describe a user, you can describe a taxonomy term. I would even dare to say that with entity, you are even able to describe your true feelings towards high-profile Hollywood celebrities. The third is, of course, using as much as possible Merfago. You know, Merfago. Merlin of Chaos with views, situs, and panels. Fago with entity, API, and rules. Those, all those models have great API, and they have great UI, and it's just a shame not to use them. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to say that I've been accused many times of being a groupie of these two. And really, people, this is really preposterous. I mean, just the fact that I have a little shrine with this picture inside and that I serve them as offering small patches doesn't mean that I'm a groupie. So some of you actually came to see organic groups. So we'll do it. I will go, uh, what, we're, what we're seeing over here is, uh, it, this is the open Gizra, this is the distribution, again, it's intended for the textile industries, so different companies can work and collaborate together on garment. What we're seeing here is a user, her name is Ellen. What we can see on the screen that she belongs to uh, two groups, one is Imanimo, the name of the company, and the second is Pattern Makers, this is like a department inside the Imanimo, we'll see how the subgroups functionality works later on. And let's go, for example, into the pattern makers page.
into the pattern makers page, what we can see is like a message stream of all the new activity that has been done in this specific group. We can see all the images that are related to the pattern makers. For example, the images over here. Let's go into the jumper and let's start seeing organic groups in action. So again, a jumper, it's a content type called item. An item can be any piece of garment, a shirt, uh, trousers, whatever. And let's as an administrator, let's edit it so we can see what it is. This is actually a node, a very simple node. We can see the title, we can see the group audience, meaning the, the group that this content belongs to, the different images, if this uh, item is public or private, and so on. So this is like a simple node. But yet, when we're looking at the picture over here, or the screen over here, we can see much more information. And I'd like to, um, to take advantage of this session to explain the way I see, um, to explain, sorry, to explain the way that I think people should be working with organic groups, and this is using page manager and panels, and I'll give some explanation about it. Who is using panels? And who is not? Why not? <laughs> so let's take, for example, this block over here. As we can see, we're talking about we're talking about a jumper, which is an item. I can see the breadcrumb telling me the hierarchy. I see home, then the company Manimo, then pattern makers, and then some information about the group itself. This is pattern makers. I can see I'm subscribed to the group, who is the group manager and so on. This is done through panels, and in this case, I'm using a mini panel. Now, the key concept in understanding the, the way of working with panels is probably understanding what context is. You might have heard about it. Also, there is an initiative for Drupal 8 talking about context. And this is the idea of if we know blocks from Drupal 6 or even Drupal 7, blocks are dumb objects. They don't know nothing about where they appear. When we have context, so I, this, like this advanced block is saying to Drupal, listen, if you want me to show something, then I must get as context an organic group, group entity. From that entity, many panels know how to extract through relationship other, other objects, other entities. So from the group itself, it will extract the node because a node, unlike Drupal 6, a node and a group are different, uh, different entities. And from the node, it will extract the user. And then if I go to the content, we'll see that this is very s just simple, just playing, displaying different fields or different CTools plugins. So for example, here in the, uh, in the body, you can see this is like expand and collapse. This is uh, like uh, a module I have in my sandbox called jQuery, uh, J jQuery Expander or something like that. Nothing too fancy. This is just a formatter on the field. So over here, I choose the expander. So that's about this element. The same thing is going here with a mini panel. Another type of inserting related information to the page is, of course, using views. Yeah, go ahead if it's an important call. So, yeah. Over here, we have the uh, group members view. Two things that I would like to show you. And we are basically querying the user. We're querying the user table. The two important things are, first, the relationship. We are adding the group membership entity. The same thing like when we, have a, we said we have a node and a group. We have another entity in organic groups called OG membership. This entity basically describes that a user relates to another group, or a node relates to another group and it adds some metadata. If the user is active there, or pending, or blocked, and it is fieldable, so you can add your own information. Later on, we'll see how we can take advantage of that. So that's the relationship. 
The second thing is we are passing here a, a contextual filter or an argument of the group ID. Again, the idea of context, we take advantage of it using a model called views content that comes with C-tools. Uh, we had a new display called content pane and over here in the argument input, again, views is now telling Drupal, I need to get the group ID from somewhere. And this somewhere is from the context and the group ID. So later on, panels know how to pass this information along into views. I forgot my list over here, so. Sorry. So the next thing I would like to, to explain is the, the roles and permission. We talked earlier about being the most, probably the, the key element in uh, organic groups. Again, as the administrator, under configuration, we have here the global roles. It means that every group that will be created automatically will be assigned this group roles, okay? They, they, they are not related to the roles that we know from Drupal itself, just for organic groups. The same thing goes for the permissions. You can see we have here different permissions that we, contro that we can control um, how, how we are interacting with a group. So for example, if I will unsubscribe from group. And now we can see the button became request group membership. It means when I'll click it, I have to request the group membership. I'm not immediately become a member. That's a permission thing. I can change it over here. I would say a non-member can subscribe without approval. So now I can just subscribe to you to the group and I'm subscribed. Again, if you're coming from OG6, this has changed. It's no longer settings. It's per gr n right now we are seeing uh, gl the global roles and permission, but we can have it per group as well. So over here, for example, just so we see an, an, another short, short example, Helen cannot edit the pattern makers. She cannot edit the pattern makers uh, item. So I actually have a few ways to give her permission. I can give her permission. I can give her a special role under the pattern makers uh, group. But it would be more interesting to see what happens if I, gi I give her a certain permission under the company, which means it's higher in the hierarchy. So first we'll define another role. Let's call it Now again, as the administrator, I'm doing it right now as the site administrator, but I could have used just the group administrator. Over here, I've got the group settings. I see all the people list that are inside the group. I can see Helen is here. It looks very similar to how Drupal core looks. And I can add the sales member. I only forgot to assign a permission 
the correct role. So it would be edit any item content. works. She now has edit permission based on her permission, not in the group, not only in the group that uh, the, the, the jumper belongs to pattern makers. It does not belong directly to Imanimo. This is actually the subgroups model that is working and give you the hierarchy. So till now we talked about the global roles and permission. Right now we are able actually to override those roles and permission. How is it done? We have, here, we have here a field that allows us to do this override. How did I get this field? Under configuration, I have the field settings. And over here I can select the bundle because we're dealing with different entities and different bundles, then I would, I would select, for example, under the node, the company and the fields, I will select the group roles and permission. Right now, I'll probably get an error because I already have it. Yeah, it's already existing in company. And actually, I can see it over here. That the company has all those fields. So back in the node edit, if I override the default roles and permissions, For that specific group, I can have my own roles and my own permissions, regardless of, uh, of the other groups. OG is taking care of checking the permission of a user based on the different roles and the def different permission they have site-wide. So if the jumper, for example, belongs to several groups, he will check permission in each group. I talked earlier about leveraging the fields. Where can we see it? We can see it when we're requesting, when we are requesting a group membership. Let me just make the permissions. Let me just change the permission a bit so there will be approval required. Okay, this is something that it's, this is, this is leveraging the fields. Again, if you're coming from OG6 and you know the code a bit, so you know that organic groups just did some form alter and, or its own form and inje ejected some form, and we made sure that whenever you uh, write a request, we catch that request from the form and we send an email, and that's it. If the email is not sent or after it was sent a year later, you cannot know what the request is. What happens over here is that we have the OG membership entity. And we actually attach a new field called request message. Request message. It's a text field. We attach it to the entity, which means that right now if I write a request, please let me in, and I say join, what actually happens is that this information is saved with the membership, with the OG membership. So we can send an email, right? No problem. But I can also later on 
create my own views or whatever and extract this information. So if the email was not sent to all group managers and there is another group manager that want to check it, they can do it. The way we define those fields is over here in the OG membership type. We see we have over here two different group membership type. I will soon explain about the expire, but let's look at the default. If I go into the manage fields, I will see the request message that comes automatically when organic groups is being enabled. And there is another one that I added myself called the last message ID. And I explain two minutes about it. This is related to the message stream. The message stream is using a model that uh, Fago and myself, we've been uh, writing together. It's very similar to activity and heartbeat, only very, a very slim model. Basically, you have a message entity and you write your own messages very similar to activity. Here, I'll try to do a demonstration so it will be clear what's going on. So over here, I see Imanimo zero and pattern makers zero. As an admin, I'll create an item. It belongs to, sorry. Okay, another user created an item. He actually created an activity. And now our user, he sees it's like he got a new activity stream, a new message that appears over here. I see you are very excited of that. I'm very happy because it took me some time to do it. And yeah, thank you. So what am I doing here? And this is actually using the new approach to Drupal 7 uh, of how we can leverage the entities and how we can leverage the fields. What actually happened over here is I'm using the OG membership to give me some metadata. The OG membership of this specific user, of user Helen, the way that she's associated with pattern makers, there is another field on that, on that entity that tells me, or tells the system, sorry, what was the last message ID she saw, right? Let's say she saw message ID one, n uh, number 100. But when administrator created an event, there was a new message, 101. So the system calculates, takes them, when we are loading the page, the system takes the, the last message ID and checks what, what was the last one. And whenever I go into pattern makers and actually see the new message activity, it is now zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be shy, don't be shy. So the membership type. Again, this is leveraging the idea of entities. We can define multiple membership types. So we have the default one, the one that we know. A user becomes a group member, and that's it. Another typical use case that we have in premium sites is that the user subscribe, that, but they should be expired after a certain amount of time, one month, one year, whatever. So I'm able to create a new membership type. I called it expire over here. You can see it in under OG expire, OG expire model. I created a new uh, membership type. I attached a field called expire. It's a date field. I added the request message because I want to have a request message. <laughs> Sorry. And currently, this is something 
a, a feature I plan to do uh, in the future. But currently, what you can already do and see the way uh, and see the different membership is, for example, if I will go to Pattern Makers Group. If I'd like to add a user, so over here I can see that the user will be added with membership default. I see just one field. If I'll change it to expire, I now, has the, I now have the date field. And it is saved with the OG membership entity. So it means with a very simple hook cron, I can go over all the different memberships that are expired and just set the membership entity, the OG membership entity, set it from active into pending. And if I would like, yeah, yeah, okay, another time, yeah. And if I would like to react on that, that's where rules kicks in. So either you do it with your own custom code or either you, you use rules. Again, if you know OG6, it tried to do everything by itself. Whenever you were kicking a user out or something like that, OG was trying to send the email. That's not the case in OG7. OG7 is saying, let me do as little as I can. I'll just, explore, I'll just expose this, this activity and you do whatever you want with it. So if we'll have a look in, in rules, for example. And we look at the OG expire rule. Yeah, the model comes with, with the rule. It's, it's mostly an example model, but it's still usable. So we can see the event is after we update an existing organic group membership. The aim of this, uh, the, 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 the target of this uh, rule is to notify a user that they were uh, ex expired. They are now pending. They're no longer active in the group. So after updating an OG membership entity, we can check is it the group is it uh, is the member membership type indeed expired? Is the status is the state sorry pending? Is the entity type a user? If so, just email just email that user. Another thing that people would probably be using organic groups is for access control, right? A part of the hierarchy that we have permission is also access control, who can see a node and who cannot. Over here right now, let's let me just verify. I'm a different I'm a different user. I can see jumper because if I lo look over here I can see jumper is public. It's accessible to all to all users. If I will change it, I can either strictly, explicitly, sorry, say it's private, or I can say use group defaults. So it will look to the, into the group it belongs to and use its def definition. And now the same user is getting this. I think this is probably also a good time. You saw the 403, the Access denied, probably a good time to show you also the page not found. It's very hard to find a unicorn, and it's even harder to make them cry and then to, to, to write the portrait. Q&A, you ask, I answer. Questions? <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I'll be with two mics. No, you want to know?
I'll, I'll repeat the question. So I just need to understand it first. Okay, so the question is, uh, what's your name? Sam. The question is, how do I know the group ID? Because like we said, the node ID might be 10, but the group ID can be one. Again, I look, if I will have a look in panels itself, as an administrator, of course you have API to get, to get uh, the group from a node, but if we're talking about the user interface and how panels can help us, So over here, over here, when I added the panel, we have this context. And when I press on this context tab, right now, panels got the node entity. That's the way it works. What I did, I added a relationship, and I say, OG group from node. And then I get the group ID automatically. That's the way to use it with panels. Otherwise, if you're using the API, you have like, uh, OG get group, you pass the node and the node ID and you get the group itself. So those are the two ways to do it. Yeah, next question. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Do you have another question I know the answer to? <laughs> there is an issue about it. I don't remember. I know, I know I gave an answer there, but I don't remember what it was. Other models, yeah. yeah. Blame somebody else. No. What about subgroups? It works. It took me like one year and a half to get to that, but yeah. Basically, there's the OG subgroups model. Uh, it's the dev version, of course, like every other uh, model in Drupal 7 right now. You just enable the model, and it works. It checks the hierarchy, it checks for the groups uh, above your group. It goes all the way up the minute it finds the permission. It has no like strict, uh, strict settings. The minute it finds one permission, then it's enough, then it's enough for it. question in the meanwhile? Yeah. Sorry? Just, just the permissions. Currently, I mean, if there is a, a need for a feature, you can open an issue and probably I'll never get to it. So. The, the permissions are per group, right? It relates to the group itself. The membership, it, it, it doesn't affect the roles of the permission. The roles and the permission are like related to the group entity and the membership is OG membership entity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there persistent URL support for it, for organic group seven? What kind of? Well, that it automatically adds the name of the group to the path. How did I add the name of the group? That's yeah. the question? Uh, is it the name of the group there? That, uh, in, in the path, is the PLM, is it just uh, the URL of the demo or is it uh, the... You mean all this? No, no, if, if you see the URL in, on top, localhost slash PLM, uh, is there persistent URL support so we can automatically add the name of the, the group there to all nodes so we know that if we're viewing a node that uh, the path is automatically there or we view a view at the path is automatically there, like we did in uh, organic and uh, Drupal six with um, uh, spaces and pure uh, and Perl. Basically, I didn't understand the question at all, so I say yes, but maybe no, <laughs> and and I'll catch you later on, and I'll, I'll better understand. Sorry. 
Any more questions? Not necessarily related to Drupal. I really talk, like talking about my personal life. Yeah. A mic, yeah. What? It took me like two months to make it, so I think never again. <laughs> oh, you sure? Um, Morton gave me some crap on Twitter the other day because he was trying to get something working with OG and rules and BBO and uh, I went to try and help him with that in my D7 sandbox and the reason that it didn't work is because the OG actions module in D6 uh, doesn't exist in D7 which was a bit of a stumbling block. Uh, is that going to be replaced? First, Morton is giving everybody uh, you know, hard times, so don't feel bad about it. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not, I myself not going to port OG actions. Maybe somebody will do it, basically because there is rules which I think is a superior model. Uh, one of my plans is actually for the next release is what we've seen, all the tables, like the people, the, the list of the table right now, it's hard-coded. What I'd like to have is views and VBO do it. So it should probably help you, but I think that there is a VBO and rules model for Drupal 7. I don't know if I go hit that. So maybe, yeah. Also, while I'm on the MC tip, um, tonight, if you didn't get the tweet from DrupalCon, um, we've managed to blag the bar here until 2 a.m., so you're all free to come down here at no cost. The bar will be, obviously, uh, at your own expense, but come down. We're going to try and get some music on and just like come down talk to some people, have some beer, no running around London to pubs that don't exist or shut about eight hours ago or any of that crap. Just come down and get shit-faced and everything's okay. Yeah, last question, Robert. What happened with? So, <laughs> that was my story, that was Organic Groups, welcome to the 24th floor, thank you very much.